Hey there, I'm Steve, this is a whiteboard, and you're watching Car Simplified. Today we're going to look at automatic transmissions and CVTs, compare them. We're not taking any apart today, we're not going to show you the insides or anything, we're just going over theory. So let's start by getting into what's drawn on this board. I've got an automatic transmission here and a CVT here. I'll explain what this pink stuff is shortly, but no transmission really matters if there's no engine attached to it. So we're going to start with the engine. So your x-axis here, this is your RPM, or revolutions per minute. Basically it's how fast your engine spins. It starts out low, gets higher and higher and higher until you go right into the danger zone. I hope we don't get copyright claim for that because I said the entire chorus of that song. But let's continue. This is going to be horsepower in red. So it starts out low and there's this peak area over here and it starts to drop off before it gets to the red line. If you've ever seen a horsepower number advertised for a car, that's it right there. Now there's also fuel economy. Now as your engine spins more and more, there's more combustion per second and that's going to require fuel. So you're using more fuel the faster your engine spins. It's probably going to be sharper, but we're working with a fictional engine here, so it can be whatever I want here. So that's what we're going with. So now that we know where peak power is, let's mark it on the graph here. So that's just a line right here. Doesn't really matter, except we're going to mark it on these graphs as well. Right about here is your peak power. Same on this one. Now with this graph that I've drawn here, there isn't really a peak fuel efficiency. Technically peak fuel efficiency would be zero. It's not using any fuel at all, but your engine also isn't running then. So there's gonna be a happy medium between an, a reasonable RPM and making not too much RPM where you're dropping off over here. So let's just say right about here. Now we have a basic understanding of this engine. If we want to make peak power, we need to be about here. If we want to make peak fuel efficiency, we need to be about here. And we're going to translate that into the transmissions we have here. Right now we've got the automatic transmission, and these are your gear ratios. They're slanty because this is a function of RPM versus vehicle speed. So let's say you're at a stop sign that's right before a merge lane onto the highway. Didn't know those existed until I moved to Connecticut, but we're at zero miles per hour and we need to accelerate to 60. So your RPM is up here and your vehicle speed is along here. As you accelerate in first gear, the gear ratio allows the RPM to go up at a certain rate relative to your speed. As it goes up and up and up, if you're flooring it, it's gonna to try to get to max power and keep it close to the, the max power range. So it might shift here, come down to here, and now you're in second gear, your RPM can rise again and you're still gaining speed, you reach here, then it shifts to third gear, you continue doing that until you're at 60 miles per hour, wherever that happens to be on this graph. Through the transmission deciding when to shift, it can actually keep the engine in that peak power band, but if you're at a stoplight that changes to green and you're just getting to the next stoplight, you don't need to use all that power to get there. You can save some fuel by shifting a little early so your RPM goes up, shifts here instead of up here, and now you're down in this bottom part of the gear ratio Heading up, continuing to accelerate, shift into the next gear, heading up, shift into the next gear. Probably won't have to use fourth gear going from one light to the other, but who knows. Now one of the inefficiencies here is that you eventually have to shift gears when you get up to a certain speed. So when you get to here, the engine has to disconnect from the rear wheels and then reconnect at this RPM. Now modern vehicles generally don't have a whole lot of trouble doing this. Between all the parts that are electronically controlled, so the computer is in control of the engine pretty much, and the precision of modern automatic transmissions, shifts are pretty precise. Automatic transmissions used to be called slush boxes because of how sloppy, imprecise, and slow shifting would be sometimes. Manual transmission enthusiasts still call them that, but modern automatic transmissions are pretty precise and shift pretty cleanly. The main problem automatics run into nowadays is just how many gears manufacturers are putting into them. They're constantly hunting for which gear is gonna be ideal for the current speed or what you're doing with the throttle. But what if you didn't have to shift at all? Enter the CVT transmission. You may see a familiar graph line or two, and that is this line right here, and this line right here. Between it, there's this big block of filled in space. Let's run the CVT through the two examples that I ran this automatic transmission through earlier. Let's start with the stop sign to the highway example. We're at the stop sign, we're at zero miles per hour, and we have to accelerate to 65 or 70 miles per hour. Now with this, we could jump around a bunch of different gears, but here, we just need to accelerate up until we get to that power range, and then we come across here, we just hang out at that P 
peak power range. Exactly at peak power, actually, if we want to. So up and straight over. No gears to shift, it's just smoothly gliding along at peak horsepower. Now let's do that red light to red light example. The light turns green, we start accelerating, and we've reached peak fuel efficiency right here, so let's just hang out there. We're going across as we build miles per hour, our RPM stays the same, and we get to where we need to go at peak fuel efficiency. Again, no shifting. Now, people like the idea of technology, improving their lives, making things better, but they also really, really crave normal stuff things that keep things normal. The CVT came along and changed things up. It was new technology, people bought it, but it didn't make that normal car noise. So instead of things just hanging out here for peak fuel efficiency or up here to make peak power, people wanted their cars to do this RPM up and down noise of shifting. So CVT started doing this. They go up a little over the green area and down and up and down, and then it eventually evens out and that's not super efficient. Engineers can program a car's computer to know exactly what RPM it needs to be at in order to make peak horsepower or peak fuel efficiency, and we figured it out. We had it right there, we had it set up to where it would stay there, and then people weren't happy, so now it's inefficient again. So with my old 2005 Mercury Montego, if you floored it on the highway, it would just hang out here making peak horsepower and it would just get the job done. I could keep on accelerating until I got to highway speed and then I'd let off the throttle, it would drop down to peak fuel efficiency mode and it would just hang out there. With the 2018 Subaru Crosstrek, it does more of this wiggle thing that wanders around the RPM a bit and I would actually prefer it to just, just hang out where it needs to hang out and not pretend like it has gears, but that's just how those two cars were set up to run. The only fundamental difference between those two CVTs is the programming that goes into controlling what RPM it hangs out at. That Montego could easily just wiggle around the RPM like the Crosstrek does, and the Crosstrek could be programmed to just hang out at the RPM that it's supposed to, and either way it works. If you wanted a CVT to reach a certain RPM at a certain speed, you could program it to do that. It would just reach that and then do whatever it needs to do afterwards. A CVT can operate anywhere in this pink box, and you may notice that that's a finite area. People will often say CVTs have unlimited gear ratios, and technically they're right. That's just not what some people will imagine when they hear unlimited gear ratios. It's the same unlimited as in there's an unlimited amount of numbers between zero and two. If it was truly unlimited, then you could be somewhere like over here, but there's a limitation to the functionality of the actual CVT components themselves, and technically you could be up here, that's just getting close to the danger zone and you don't want to have your RPM blow up the engine. If you're wondering how a CVT actually does all this, I'll link you to a video that explains how it works, shows you the insides. It's really fascinating inside. I really recommend checking it out if you've never seen the inside of one before. Before you go, I hope you consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next Car Simplified video.